Hello, I'm Sari Wild here with my co-host, Yaya. <laughs> um, for our project, Experiments and Recognition, and today we are interviewing Jonah Dempsey. Hello. There he is, this fancy green screen. <laughs> So today we are playing with and talking about motivation and in particular the motivations of desire, um, which my motivation is desire and so is Jonah's, and innocence, which is Yaya's. <laughs> oh, look, she's giggling. <laughs> I don't know if your face comes up. I hope it does. Um, <laughs> Yeah, laugh louder. <laughs> um, Yaya's is innocence and the um, unique interplay between these two. Um, so it, when we were when we were talking before this um, in our last meeting about doing this video, it was pretty funny because there was like some calling out of us transferring to the other side <laughs> innocence to desire and desire to innocence so we're just gonna um keep playing with that today and see where it takes us so um first we want to share with you why we wanted to talk to jonah today so i'm gonna let yaya start because you guys are our buddies um yeah um well i've had the pleasure of um spending time with Jonah in person as well. Um, uh, he's been a teacher to me. Um, he's introduced me to so many different aspects. I mean, actually, he's the one, although motivation, I heard about it before, I never actually paid attention to it, but he's the one that actually introduced me to it. Um, and it's, it's just, he's been a teacher on different levels and whenever I have a question um, I ask them and it's great having a person like talking about in human design language and um, yeah I mean and um, he introduced me to PHS um, and yeah a lot of things um, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want to ask you, like, because when we were, sorry, when we were talking about it before, you were just, like, burning with passion about, like, how much you love Jonah. So why don't you just tell us that? <laughs> um, well, he's totally recognizing me as a projector. Um, my individuality, um, he's opened me up to the motivation of desire. Um, he's really opened me up to and shown me the beauty of, collective. I mean, I'm purely individual. So I was kind of a little bit, you know, I always looked on kind of the not self side and he kind of showed me the healthy side of it. And yeah, and he's just a beautiful person. Um, he's himself, you know, and I get to see that sacral. He's real. He follows the sacral thing. He follows the collective, you know, and it's just, yeah, it's just beautiful. Hmm. Gosh. You're making me blush. <laughs> it's true. Uh, well, I, I was, well, I was still am so happy to have met Yaya as essentially the, the first person I got to know um, outside of the internet that actually online. And we could actually engage and kind of observe and, and experiment and check in on each other's experiments and, and all of this. And uh, it was very exciting for me because. I've had friends that I, I've introduced to it, or I had friends, particularly in Seattle, where I'm from, that are into Gene Keys, which is more popular here, kind of this alternate uh, system. But, you know, um, I remember, I think we met through, was it the Open Centers Without Activations Facebook group? Or we were on one of those groups, and I saw Yaya post about being on Orcas Island. And uh, really struck a chord for me because Orcas Island, up in the Pacific Northwest here near Seattle, in the, in the San Juan Islands is actually where I had my first reading. It's a connection for me to think, wow, here's somebody in my neck of the woods who you know, I can connect with. And uh, we started talking online and she came to Seattle and uh, it's, it's been really, 
really great connection, and I've, I've learned a lot from you as well. So. <laughs> Aww. And actually, I'm going to mention one thing because, you know, I just want to say because I'm, I'm so grateful for this. Um, I'm being totally recognized. I'm just going to mention a smaller in incident that when I'm nocturnal eater, and I'll never forget when you do that, when you did that, is like he handed me something to eat and then he dimmed down the lights. Oh. <laughs> That's so sweet. I mean, really. <laughs> it's so sweet. I love it. Oh, so feeling the love here. Okay, so it's my turn. Um, I love that she brought up Orcus too. I didn't know that was a thing for you, Jonah, but it was. Um, Actually, I hooked you up with that Orcus gig. Orcus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And it, Orcus has been a really special place for me. I haven't been up there for a while, but there was, there was like a year and a half that I was spending quite a bit of time. Anyway, cool synchronicity. But um, I met Jonah through, he started the um, 5152 Lounge um, a Facebook group which I just loosely call the heretics lounge, but it's not all heretics. It's just those two profiles. And I've seen him around online. And um, actually before I knew that Yaya and Jonah were um, connected, um, I had noticed Jonah and that he was, he just had the most thoughtful comments on things and was like always there to like step in and like shine some light on someone's question and, you know, and design, like, I mean, I run in projector groups and I run in heretic groups <laughs> and there tends to be a lot of like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Help me. Um, and Jonah would just come in with this really just like level understanding um injection of information and and has done that for me too um in particular about two fours which i have had quite the struggle with this year and has been like a big investigation for me it's like the universe t t tends to just like send me things to investigate <laughs> and this year it's been the two fours which are harmonic with the five one profile which jonah and i both have so um it's a little bit at my wits end about them and um Jonah definitely shed some light on that. So um, that was great. And then just, you know, the meeting we had before, I did notice, yeah, Jonah's very himself. I love that, like, when he has no sacral response, he's just sitting there blank. <laughs> so great. So um, that's refreshing. Yeah, thank you, Jonah. I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, so um, Yaya has a story to read. So um, Yaya has the channel 2551, and I, I see that this is a lot where her stories come from, um, being like a priestess, shaman, uh, channel of being first. And um, she writes these beautiful um, allegorical stories, and she does them... Um, custom for people too so you can actually have her write a story for you or for a loved one as a gift and they're remarkable she wrote one for me and it was just such a beautiful way to be recognized and to reflect on myself but um she has one to read about um desire and innocence yeah yeah um it um it's kind of it's just a silly funny one that came to me last year um uh -huh. i don't know exactly why i'm even reading it but it just came to me to read it i think it definitely brings in innocence and desire so yeah uh-huh jonah is that not totally like innocence what she just said it's pretty innocent yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> You don't know why, but we do. So please proceed. <laughs> okay. so, it's called uh, Sirius and EMS. So, once upon a time, there were two men, Sirius and EMS, even more serious. Everything in life had to be planned. Every move. I mean, every move. 
EMS even had a specific schedule for the times he visited the pool room. One day, his client was one minute late. He shook his head and pointed to the clock. I am one minute behind schedule, he exclaimed as he started to sweat with anxiety. You can poo one minute faster, suggested Sirius. Brilliant. Phew, said EMS. EMS proceeded with his day. Sirius and EMS lived together. EMS could not live without Sirius, and Sirius could not live without EMS. Everything had to be perfectly ordered. Even the plates were chronologically arranged from the time they were created. One thing you could most certainly never do is mix up the mugs. The red one was for coffee, the black for tea, the orange for liquor, the green for soda, the purple for jasmine tea, the pink for orange or lemon juice, the white for water, and it went on and on. The motto was, the motto was order is what this planet needs. Rules, laws, and regulations were God's gift to the planet. That evening, there was a knock on the door. Sirius and EMS looked at each other, puzzled, as they noticed the time. We have no planned visit, said Sirius. We don't have time for this, said EMS. They ignored the, lock, the knock in hopes it would go away. The door simply kept going. We do not have a choice, they thought. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll just have to sleep less, said EMS, very annoyed as he rolled his eyes. As they opened the door, they noticed it was a child. Hello, I am unexpected, said the child, wearing a purple shirt, green pants, and orange shoes. Both Sirius and EMS looked at each other in terror. That does not match, said Sirius. EMS rushed over and rewrote their schedule, placing Unexpected's visit in there so it was not so unexpected. Okay, we're good, he said to Sirius. The child looked at them and passed gas. Put that in your schedule, he said as he laughed. Sirius and the MS did not think this was funny at all. Unexpected began to look around the house. Everything followed, everything followed every regulation known to mankind. You may sit here, said Sirius, as he pointed to the chair that was marked, guest. Why? asked Unexpected. Because it says guest, don't you see? answered EMS. Unexpected sat on the floor. I do not need a chair. The floor feels better, said Unexpected. Of course, Sirius and EMS began to panic. They began to recite all about the bacteria that the little child could get from the floor and the scientific evidence backing it up. Unexpected past gas once more. To what do we all owe this horror? I mean, honor, asked Sirius. No reason, answered Unexpected. I just felt it would be fun to come and visit. Sirius and EMS looked at each other in confusion. Sirius quickly rushed and grabbed the Book of Order, rushing through the papers trying to find this. No, no, this is not possible, said Sirius. It does not exist. But I am here, said Unexpected. Yes, but this is a mistake. You will mess up the order, said EMS. EMS went on a long dissertation of how one plus two equals three. Unexpected, bored out of his wits, began looking around to see what he could do um, that was fun. The couch looked quite comfy. Unexpected began jumping up and down on it, having a grand old time. Sirius and EMS stood not believing their eyes. That is not what couches are for, said Sirius. Unexpected ignored them. He was having too much fun. He even knocked over the flower arrangement with its perfectly all white roses. The pillows were color coordinated. This is not fun, he thought as he switched them and resumed jumping. EMS was yelling for unexpected to stop until he noticed something. Not only did the couch look more beautiful this way this, with this pillow arrangement, but he suddenly had a magnificent idea. His clients had been asking him for a new idea. 
and instantaneous jolt of intricate design for their new buildings. EMS had not been able to come up with anything. There were only certain designs in the Book of Order. Nothing else existed. EMS realized something else was possible. It was brilliance. He was searching for years in the Book of Order for a way to make this happen. I will one day, he would say. He never gave up. It must be something that already exists in the world that we can use, he thought. Now he realized that he was searching for something that already existed, when he could have been searching all along for that which had not been created yet. Not only could it be done, but he could take it to a whole nother level. The child stopped jumping on the couch, reached in his back pocket, and handed a colorful book to Sirius and EMS entitled chaos. As they opened the door, they noticed there was no, uh, as they opened the book, they noticed there was no writing in it, only various sparkly creatures, images, shapes, and symbols, which changed constantly every 10 seconds. This was the end of Planet Ridiculous and the beginning of Planet Infinite Possibility. Um, I love it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> did you, hey, Jonah, did you start to get a little like antsy at a point? I, I mean, I, I did. <laughs> I was wondering if you felt it too. I have the 952, so I get completely wrapped up and concentrating. <laughs> awesome. I was like, is she just saying that we are like uptight? Jerks? <laughs> well, or she has gas. <laughs> oh, I don't know if. Um, yeah, and, I could be seen that way. I didn't even interpret it. I also have the 4629, which, for those who don't know, is the channel of uh, it's the most experiential, kind of existential channel where you're fully absorbed in the moment and you can't even try to make sense of it. Because if you do, it pulls you out of the moment. So I, I cool. was so fully absorbed. Well, it's cool, but it also it takes me a while to like reflect back on what I've just experienced and then, you know, get information out of it because uh, I can't really like be in something and also be thinking about it at the same time. So I literally, honestly, made zero connection to desire. And <laughs> anything. I was just, but I, I really enjoyed the story. And, um, <laughs> But no, but that, but but okay. So I see what you're saying, though. That Sirius and uh, EMS were perhaps uh, more on the desire side. Is what the conclusion. I, <laughs> I actually, when I wrote it, I didn't know about motivation, so I'm not. I I didn't see it as people design. I don't see that actually as people design. I see more the innocence and maybe individuality, collective. You know, not right, self, that's self. That's for sure. yeah. For those who don't know um, of the viewers. Um, there's different kinds of circuitry in uh, you know, human design. We have um, your pure, purely uh, individual circuitry, which means your channels are purely individual. Sari, you're also in individual, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'm purely collective. And so when you look at the three basic circuitry types, individual, tribal, and collective, um, they're all kind of um, competing with each other in different ways, cooperating in some ways, but they, they're very different. And, um, you know, both the individual and the tribal are very threatening to the collective. The individual threatens the tribe and the collective. I mean, they're all, they're all a little bit, you know, um, so, but yeah, it's really interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and, and definitely, you know, individual is about kind of free to be you and me, personal empowerment, uh, you know, the ability to um, just be yourself and not, you know, not let anyone influence you really uh, or condition you or, you know, homogenize you. And then the collective is definitely more one of the main kind of, you know, homogenizing forces in the world, this big conditioning force that wants to standardize everything and make it all kind of the same in this like universally accessible way. Um, and then the, the tribe is really about support networks and about uh, maintaining um, these networks of kind of us versus them, where, you know, the, the classic tribal versus collective is going to be 
the tribe is trying to maintain the culture of a certain area and the collective is moving in and putting in Walmarts and putting in, you know, fast food and convenience stores and all this is kind of the classic. Um, but yeah, I could see, I could see how Sirius and uh, EMS, which, what did that stand for? Extremely, even, even more serious. Yeah. Even more serious. I could see how they're, um, they are maybe tribal and collective both because both of those are kind of the two enemies of, of the, you know, individual, the tribe is the one that's going to try to get you to follow tradition and the collective is going to try to get you to, you know, be modern and be contemporary and get rid of tradition, but, but at least express yourself in a way that's clearly understandable by anyone. And I can see how both of those are a little bit serious compared to the, you know, individuals, um, freedom to be themselves and freedom to express themselves however they want with no need to give an explanation. I mean, kind of the other two are always saying, explain yourself, explain yourself. So the tribe says, explain what you mean by that. <laughs> explain yourself. Yeah. yeah, I, well, which is the key to the individual being accepted, right? Um, so can I ask you a question? Joda? Oh, sure. What, how is your motivation at play in what you just shared with us? Um, well, I, I definitely had an agenda there. I mean, I, I don't, the way I understand motivation is that it's something that um, is almost like a balance that you kind of, you know, I, I see motivation as changing very rapidly. So for, first of all, just to, to kind of have a step back, there is, six possible motivations for those who don't know and they're in pairs and the pairs transfer to you know each other so we're talking about the pair of desire and innocence and this idea of transference simply means that um, we can find ourselves basically in the other mode the transferred mode where we really don't have the cognitive support the actual intelligence or the cognition to really know how to do that well. So in a way, when I'm in my transferred innocence, I don't actually know what to be innocent about or how to really be innocent or, you know, it's kind of, it's a, it's a sham innocence. And this is what's interesting because when you look at the motivations, um, you can see, like for instance, the first motivation is fear. Well, all we know of fear is people who are actually the fourth motivation who are transferred to fear. Because transference is so ubiquitous that what we've learned what fear is, you know, is from people who are transferred into that. So they're afraid of everything. Well, if you actually have the motivation of fear and you have the um, cognitive underpinning to, you know, and you're not in transference and you're able to, to, to be motivated by that, what, what that's going to do for you is actually know exactly what to be afraid of. What, what is a reasonable fear? You have the intelligence to know what to be afraid of. Um, so, so I would say that in what I've been talking, you know, my, my motivation in bringing up the tribal versus collective versus individual, I think it matches with desire for the most part. Um, I definitely flicker into innocence and I notice when I do, you know, uh, it's, I say flicker or balance because it's something that happens very quickly. It's not like, um, a long-term process where you're slowly moving from one side to the other. I mean, it's literally, you notice the transference like that. Like if I start to blush or I start to get embarrassed, it throws me into, into innocence. <laughs> Things start to get a little bit, um, I'm in my desire mode. So, okay. So to give an example of what I consider the mode of desire, the true desire is um, in a way I, I smile a lot less. I'm very direct, I'm very blunt. I start to preach because desire is also called the priest or the preacher. <laughs> the motivator is the priest or the preacher. I mean, you have to remember um, Ra, Ra Uruhu, the, you know, the messenger of human design, he had third color motivation. He was desire. So he described in his own life how he lived his whole life locked into transference um, up until his encounter and then kind of slowly finding his way and and his transference was basically his entire life up to through his 30s where he just wanted to get high and play guitar he didn't want to be involved he wanted to be distant and aloof 
He had no agenda, no real motivation. See, the sixth color motivation, the transference, is actually a motivational. It's outside of motivation. The third color is seen to be the heart of motivation, and part of the reason desire is linked to the priest or the preacher is because it's kind of like a motivational speaker who's actually helping others to align to their motivation, getting them in touch with their motivation even. Okay, uh, okay, okay. I'm, can I pause you? Sure. Um, there's just so much there and it's going so fast. So okay, um, no, no, we, can, we can roll it back. I just was, you know, <laughs> Well, I love it. You accelerated out of preacher. You like, just like launched. Well, because we need to, you know, we don't have a lot of time left. We have maybe 20 minutes or 15 minutes. And I'm, I, I want to make sure we at least, you know, as a collective being, I'm trying to transmit the information out there. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And that's what I want to recognize actually is what's happening. So I, I just want to bring it back to like, and uh, I want to talk about blushing too, because that like really pops something, but I, to really identify, like, what are you desiring when you're sharing all this with us? To, I mean, to, if you could just identify yeah, I, it right there. I mean, being motivated by desire is not my own desire as much as it's being motivated by, um, being motivated in a sense by uh, leadership is a big part of it. So desire is an interesting word for it, but essentially it was chosen, I believe in part because it's the core of all motivation. So it's almost like saying third color motivation is motivation because all motivations are desires in a way, you know, fear is a desire to be free from fear. Need is yeah. a desire to have something you need and so on. And so the third, which is what we're talking about here, desire is, is right at the heart of motivation. It has two on either side. And the sixth, which is what Yaya has, innocence, is completely outside of motivation. It's amotivated. It has no motivation. It has no agenda. It has no plan. It's kind of like, I know I'm in my transference if someone says, you know, why are you going to this party? Oh, I don't know. I just, just going to see what happens. But if I'm going to a party because there's someone there that I want to meet, because I have an agenda, because I want to talk to them about something, you know, that would be motivated by desire. In this case, you know, my motivation is to... Um, clarify and to share and uh you know it, it's it's not always personal that's the other thing desire is not simply a personal desire like i desire this or i desire that yeah. desire can very much just be about being motivated by the passion to um lead and to kind of it's it's really hard to put into words but it definitely there's an agenda but the agenda will be different each time it's more like the cognitive ability to know what the right agenda is or to be in touch with an agenda. So I'm in touch with the agenda of our talk right now, right now. Our agenda is to go into motivation and innocence. And yeah. So I'm trying to steer and maybe even take a leadership position, which can be difficult when you have two people who both have to start. <laughs> We're both going to be trying to lead. I mean, that's the thing. Um, you know, it's so it's, but, it, but it's not that we will necessarily step on each other's toes as much as, we're going to be, if we're both in desire, we're both, we're both going to be kind of keeping each other in check about are we, are we on the agenda or are we just free floating, free balling, you know? Yeah. That's more I, I think it's great. I don't, yeah, because actually when we spoke before, we were talking about wanting these videos to be accessible to people who don't know all about design um, that you could actually follow what we're saying. And so I really appreciate you for like when you jumped in and started just like explaining circuitry and then the, and then the other stuff about motivation. I was like, Oh, he's on it. <laughs> Cause I kind of forgot, but it was perfect kind of co-leadership. Well, and we're sharing in the responsibility and, you know, for me, my responsibility having collective circuitry is to kind of make sure everybody's included and having individual circuitry is a very different responsibility is to make sure others don't interfere with you or others don't influence you as much. It's, a, it's very uh -huh. different. But, uh, so I'm very attuned to, oh no, somebody who's watching this might be left out. They're going to be left out. Therefore, we better include them by kind of clarifying this and this and this. And, you know, there's a strong conditioning force from each of the circuitries to try to get other people to do that. And it's actually a relief to know that you don't have to. I mean, you don't have to care about whether other people can follow or not, because leave that to the collective folks. <laughs> I mean, everyone should, you know, we, we all have... Um, 
gates from different circuitry and so on. But, uh, you know, it was, it was a huge relief for me to realize I don't have to be supportive because I'm not tribal. You know, I might support someone through sharing with them, but I'm not going to support them in the conventional tribal way of being this, this supportive force. And, you know, that, that could be kind of, um, I mean, I don't tell people that usually like, Oh, by the way, I'm not going to support you. <laughs> you know, that's not a, it's, it's not a good look, but. Uh. So I, I want to, um, I, I'm just noticing how it's really funny because you and I are like, could very easily like dominate this whole thing. But I saw Yaya, like, I, I think if you're watching the video, you can't see her when we're talking, but um, she, she's had these little smiles going on. So I just want to check in with you, Yay, and see what's going on for you. Uh, thank you. Um, I have a question if I'm going to ask. Actually, Bring it. Uh, when you mentioned, I'm very curious because you mentioned the, the, the motive, right? Not having a motive with the innocence. And I mean, for me, what I realized, and I realized this summer, actually, with the motive, it's like, people wouldn't understand that aspect that I don't have a motive. And like, I wouldn't feel recognized because people, I mean, I'd create events and stuff. And I was like, I don't know why I'm doing it. You know, I just want people. And it's the just being right, because innocence is just I just want to be I mean, that's all I care about. I just want to be in the moment. It's, you know, and that's what I would do. I would create a space for people to just be. And then people would be like, okay, you know, like, but are you making money? You know, this, like, what are you doing this for? And everything. I'm like, but I'm, I don't know. I'm just, you know, no motive. And I was just, my question was, I'm just curious, like even Sheree, maybe you can answer it too. From a person with the perspective, with the motivation of desire, like, how does that look to you? Like, how do you experience that? No motive, no agenda. Down, just. Do you have That's something, Jenna? Do you want to take that one, or? I mean, I I always have something to say. <laughs> Is that part of desire, <laughs> or it's just my open throat projector trip? Well, one thing that comes to mind is, um, like, I have been getting a lot of potential clients lately who are innocent innocence motivation and in a lot of like um in my coaching tribe <laughs> um there's a lot of talk about like getting like helping the person get to what it is they really want and if you can find that with them then you know they might want to hire you um, like a burning desire. <laughs> and so it's been interesting with the innocence because it's not like that. But like you said, Jonah, there is like each motivation does have a desire in a sense. It's just like a different quality. So I don't know, that's what I've been observing. And I've just been proceeding really slowly with those people. And, um, I actually have gotten into, instead of telling them what their motivation is, I ask them and it's remarkable. They know. They'll say, huh, I don't really have one. <laughs> um, so. Well, I mean, that, that also, I mean, the, the thing to also realize is that um, there are either, you know, I think motivation is, is very tricky because I've certainly read about it and understood it as an abstract concept long before I really clicked into, oh, that's what it is. And when mm -hmm. it finally clicked for me, I realized it's something that I've experienced and you've probably experienced too throughout your life where there'll be certain times where, where you, you notice yourself snap into this other cognitive mode and you can really start to notice it. And uh, the way that I think about it is like when I'm, you know, in innocence, which is actually was a lot of the time of my life. I mean, th th you can get locked into it. You can totally get locked into transference. When I was in innocence, someone asks, oh, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? I don't know. It's up to you. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. Oh, you want to go here? No, that's okay. Oh, you know, it's like this very like sweet, smiley, like, <laughs> love, like, yeah, that sounds great. You know, yeah, it called you on that in our last meeting. Yeah, because it will go back that? and forth. No, it like, to innocent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she will. And, I mean, but the thing is, so, but then desire is a very, uh, you know, I think about it like just very directly stating, like, 
do this, do that, like commanding even. Like you can just be really commanding. I mean, it's like, you can, a great example is Ra. If you notice when Ra is doing talks and so on, he's very no nonsense. He might laugh and make some jokes and he might kind of preach a little bit and get amped up as a preacher, but he's very, um, you know, he's not like, well, maybe this is something that might help you. If, you know what I mean? He doesn't have this very like um, kind of, uh, I think of innocence as again being, you know, less pushy or less directed or just kind of like, there, there's no agenda, there's no goal, you know, with desire, it, you need to have a goal. Um, so I guess I'm just going to say that, yeah, when you're, so definitely it's, it's just realizing that it is a very, uh, it's a, something that you can experience, you can notice when people do it. I mean, I've worked with people who have uh, motivation of innocence as well. Um, I don't really work professionally in that capacity, but I've done a number of readings and I have friends who have this and, uh, you know, we folks who have desire are supposed to help to align people. We really are. We're supposed to be able to align them to their proper motivation. So in this case, to align somebody to innocence, which is a lack of motivation, is to essentially um, work with them on issues where they're actually, they have a really strong agenda. Like, oh, I'm going to go to school so I can get this degree, so I can stay with this person, and I'm going to finish this book, and I'm going to get this kind of job, and they have this whole plan, and it's getting them to kind of, not have that anymore or not see the world in that way or you know to just go to a party for no reason at all because something might happen to go for a walk for no reason at all I mean, this is innocence it's just literally there's no reason for it to exist there's no purpose for it you know there's no agenda oh i'm so guilty of that i love that i yeah. love that yeah um <laughs> yeah do you have any any questions on that or any observations um, no, it's just, I love it because I feel recognized. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, especially with the plan thing. I mean, this summer too, it's like when I always feel people tell me like, well, what's your plan? Because I get that a lot. You know, I'm like, I don't have a plan. You know, I don't know. You know, and like it's when someone tells you, you know, you have a plan. For me, I, I don't feel recognized at all. And that's what I did this summer. You know, people ask me what your plan is. So my plan's not is to not have a plan you know it's kind of open it's it's all about being like being like it's everything i mean for me it's just everything just being in the moment and just and it's kind of i don't know if that's the innocence but for me it's almost being in a all day hypnotic state like meditative state you just flowing and I mean I think my individuality maybe comes into that because it's a creativity so I'm like alone and it's just you just yeah you just just you don't know what's gonna happen and it's a I love it it's like a, a, I love the unknown like not knowing you know what tomorrow's gonna be the next move is gonna be you know what that's gonna bring it's very open it's like a blank slate I don't know if that's the innocence, but, mm. but, but I, I kind of, did I ask you, Jonah, because Ross said, because I found that, that like innocence is kind of everything, like it's very important for projectors. And you've pointed that out to me, like when I'm making decisions and I do find it, it's just as important as strategy and authority I know about for your, projectors. Yeah, to, which, which could be innocence or could be a different motivation. But, but for, yeah, because you said innocence is very important for the No, no, sorry. I meant motivation generally. Sure. Would you like to, you know? Well, that's what I, I mean. I, just, I can just share what I've, I've learned from it. Obviously, I'm not a projector. I'm a generator. Um, so what I have is this sort of uh, feeling which kind of usually comes out in a sound that I make. Um, when I encounter something and, and so a big part of being a generator is getting in touch with this sacral or you know feeling that uh, and really just kind of letting yourself make those sounds to the point where now sometimes I'll be checking email and I'll just go ah, and that's just, <laughs> I really don't want to get an email from that person you know I don't want to deal with that or I'll get another email and I go hmm. you know I get a nice sound yeah a nice coup or something so for generators we have this ability kind of be in touch with that sacral sound and you know it can be different if you're an emotional generator i'm a pure generator I, I don't have any emotional definition if you have emotional definition as a generator that sound might change over time and you have to notice how that sound changes on your wave but for projectors there's there's nothing really like that except motivation which which can kind of be because again motivation happens so quickly um you can kind of notice it 
and notice like if you have to make a decision and you know it's not a, even a necessarily a really big decision because again the projector strategy and authority kind of kick in for really major life decisions I mean, I guess it, could, it can be a smaller decision too. Like, am I really invited over to this dinner party? Does this person actually, you know, why are they inviting me? Are they really inviting me because they see me and appreciate me in certain ways or are they just... Yeah, those are important to be in tune with as a projector. Yeah, yeah. I've totally gone for the wrong reasons and then been like felt so depleted. Yeah, exactly. So it can guide you at that level. But I mean, there's definitely also this second layer where... I would say it's really just about noticing. Um, I mean, it's easier for me to talk about being in desire and transferring to innocence because I've experienced it. It's almost like flinching when you're in, when you're really locked into desire. You're not going to flinch, and, you know, and you're not going to blush, and you're not going to go, <laughs> and you're not going to, you know, you're not going to kind of get pulled out of this serious kind of. I mean, we are serious, and we are, yeah, an <laughs> EMS. Okay, we are. No, but well, so but again, the transference isn't the end of the world because you know I'll I'll see myself. I mean, you can see Ra himself go into innocence sometimes when he's playing guitar or he's cracking a joke or some. You know, you see the transference it flickers. It's more just about you know being mo mainly be, and it's not and it's not something you can even really try as much as it's something you just notice as you get settled in your own body. You just notice yourself more and more being in one or the other. Um, yeah, it's, it's harder for me to talk about what it would be like to be a person who is in a sense transferring to desire other than I think they would be a little more, I mean, I, I definitely have experienced it where someone whose motivation innocence has been a little more bossy with me and they've tried to take charge and leave and say, no, no, don't do that. No, uh, you know, put that over there and things like that. And that definitely is the transference because people who are innocent are not supposed to leave. They're not supposed to be bossy. They're not even supposed to walk in the front of the group. You know, that's another interesting thing. I've noticed that, um, you know, being in desire, it's, it, uh, it has to click in. It has to kick in. Like, actually, I was with Yeah right, right before you left Seattle last time. We went to that uh, event down at South Lake Union, and we kind of left the event. We're walking around, and I was not in my desire mode. I was just kind of just palling around hunky-dory, and, really, and we were walking aimlessly. And eventually I said, okay, let's go to the, the wooden boat place. <laughs> And I like it clicked in and they were like, here we go this way. And I like, started to lead her. And then, you know, it was very decisive and direct and this is what we're doing and kind of no nonsense. And I'm taking charge and leading the way. And, you know, but it, it definitely had to engage. I wasn't just naturally like that. I was kind of naturally. Huh. So I think that's what it's about is noticing that switch. And I've only really noticed it for myself. I, I you know, I haven't really seen it. Um, but, I, you know, but I can kind of tell sometimes with other people, I have noticed it's really, it is a noticeable thing. It's not an abstract concept. It is like you, like people who don't know anything about human design would notice like, wow, that person really just took charge or wow, that person really let go and doesn't, you know, or however it's going to be depending on which direction it's going. Yeah. So. Well, this actually leads into another question I have. And, um, and while I'm at it, while I rem I'm remembering, I wanted to share your chart. Is that okay? Please do. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I probably should have shown it in the beginning for the nerds. <laughs> I love how you say that. <laughs> what did you say? I love how you say that. I want to show it with the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, share screen. Here we go. Do -do -do. Okay. So there's Jonah. I, I was also like, oh man, we all three have open throats here. So, but, um, but we get some definition there because I have the 22, I think. <laughs> do I? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you do. You're you have pretty one, sure I do. one and a half of those. So. I think I do. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay. So, it, an image came to mind too when you're talking um, about walking with Yaya because I was just out on a walk um, last week or last weekend with um, my housemate who is an innocence motivation generator <laughs> and um, we took this video of us like sitting on the log swinging our feet and just giggling you know it was very innocent um, 
so the question has to do with like the benefit of, I mean, because transference is when you're like, you get lost in it or whatever, right? Like you forget and you're just like, but I don't know, I'm just being innocent. But like when you're actually enjoying that contrast and benefiting from that contrast, just like you taking leadership with Yaya, you know, she's like hopping onto your motivation in a way and you hopped onto hers with the aimless walk. So is that a clear question? Yeah, like what is the benefit or how do we, I mean... Yeah, because we kind of need each other, right? It's like we wouldn't want to just always be in desire. It's something about tasting that other side. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's you know, the most you can really hope for is something like an 80-20 or something. And, and you know, the other um, perspective, which is your personality nodes, also transfer. And those transfer even more. Um, and transference isn't considered such a problem there. The main problem at the personality sun earth level is that um, the personality transference basically robs us of our real cognitive potential because when we're locked into our transference, we are um, making, you know, it's particularly mental decisions. This is for just most of the world that's not experimenting with strategy and authority. The mental decision making is not going to be based on um, on the proper motivation, meaning that we don't actually know innately, or you know, and it, it even relates to like outer authority, like what we're putting out there to the world, what we're externalizing, what we're saying to people, and, and so on, um, is not going to be based. You know, if my motivation is need, then I have this amazing cognitive gift to know what needs to be done. But when I'm in my transference, which could be my entire life if I'm not following strategy and authority, then I'm going to be externalizing fear, nothing but fear and a really negative version of fear, like not knowing what to be afraid of, just fear about everything, just fear, fear, fear. Um, you know, on the contrary, if I'm somebody who has first color motivation, which is fear, if I'm really following strategy and authority and I'm really in touch with that, I'll know exactly what to be afraid of and it'll be a really positive, healthy thing. So I can tell people, Hey, you should be concerned about that. You should worry about that. You should be aware of this. You know, basically I'll be a voice of caution and the voice of safety and security. Um, and I'll be a, a great teacher. And because that's the first color has a, a resonance with teaching as well. Um, each of the colors of motivation also have a name, which is basically a figure. Like I said earlier, for desire is the priest. Mm. Um, you know, the sixth color, innocence, is the Buddha. Mm. So in that in that way, if Yea is is in her true motivation, she'll be Buddha-like. She'll be outside of the binary in this kind of sixth line, sixth color continuity of being beyond good and bad and beyond motivation of you know. So it's basically, um, so I would say the great benefit is to really be able to um, be supported by your real cognitive potential. I mean, with desire, we have this great gift of knowing what people's desires are, of knowing what their motivations are, of uh, being in touch with this passionate kind of, with motivation itself, you know, a great gift for motivating people, for being motivational speakers, for aligning people to their correct motivations. Like, all of these are our great cognitive gifts. When we're in innocence, we, we don't have that gift of actually, you know, I would say that the, the, the negative side is that when you're in transference, you end up um, drawing towards you the transferred encounters. And this gets a little bit maybe too much to handle today, but uh, <laughs> just for a minute, I, I can just give a really short version. When we're transferred into innocence, we're going to experience a theme, maybe even a fascination with aliens because innocence relates to aliens. And again, I don't mean like literal flesh and blood aliens. I mean like aliens in the collective mythos or the collective you know, imagination of what it is to, to be human. And what if you think you're an alien and you have desire motivation? Absolutely, that's extreme. I, I'm asking for a friend. Okay, well, well, that's extreme transference to innocence. <laughs> No, no, that's literally, I mean, word for word, Ra says, when you transfer to innocence, you will feel like an alien. You will feel like an outsider. Wow. These are people that have alien encounters. They have fascinations with aliens. I have a friend who had an alien encounter, who literally had an alien abduction experience. 
And it was, it was actually, it was no joke. I mean, it was, was she desired? For her. yes, she was. I looked that up afterwards and I just knew it. As soon as she told me that I knew this is because it was a shattering experience. It took her like two years to recover. I mean, she was on the edge of uh, severe mental illness and obsession. She told everyone that she met about this experience. The thing that happens with extreme transference is people get very, very obsessive with whatever that theme is. Huh. So, okay, this is funny because I know somebody who is desire, I'm sorry, innocence and has also had an alien, a, a number of them. So, I mean, that could, that okay. could be transferred. Yeah, that, that might actually be, I mean, that'd be interesting. Legit? <laughs> it interesting their relationship to ghosts because ghosts is the transference from innocence to desire. Um, huh. And the, the way that works is that these are all kind of at a symbolic level. Also, it would be interesting if your friend um, who is innocence was how, if they were negatively affected or not, or if they were, um, because for some people, it's a really shattering experience. And I feel like if you're innocence, you might be able to handle an experience like that a little better. Yeah, it was, it was borderline, but, but her nature was to go to the beauty of it for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well yeah no no it's, it's really fascinating so what do you have over there yeah you you have this like this look um i'm listening <laughs> 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 i uh i don't i don't have anything to say on the that the aliens ghost thing at the moment but on what you were saying before jonah on the, cause you're, it's about the not self. I found, yeah, for me, it's like when I've, times in my life where I've transferred into desire, it's like, I'm not a projector anymore. Cause that's the way I lead through my innocence. Mm. So I've seen that as, yeah. So quite major. If I really got caught up in the whole desire thing. And also well, like what you were saying with the Buddha thing, like, it's it's almost like I see the desire as a different kind of Buddha, right? It's like it, it's like the innocence is a role model, right? And mm -hmm. the desire is the leader, and it's both like a, just a different kind of Buddhahood. But well, the, yeah, desire is typically called the priest, but I mean, I think it's the idea there is that. Um, the priest or the preacher is really uh, motivating people and they're kind of talking about, they're engaging the desires of the listener. Um, the Buddha is kind of outside of it all or above it all, or somehow, um, you know, more like aloof, distant. Um, and then the connection to ghosts and aliens is, is simply that, you know, someone who's innocent, who's in their transference to desire, they might feel like a ghost or they might be haunted by the ghosts of their past, which is full of regret over past decisions they made. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, Sari and myself who have color three motivation desire, we are theoretically equipped, if we're not in transference at least, we're equipped to have a no regrets way of living where we have the cognitive potential to see the value in every experience that has led us to who we are at this exact moment. Therefore, we're, we have the potential to not be haunted by the regret over past decision. Um, okay, so. so here's where my ignorance is coming in handy because I, I have a question about that. Please. I can't, can I see you guys or do we have Jonah's chart up? Because I can't get, where is it, my Jonah's chart is up and I think whoever's talking is in a little window in the corner. Well, I can't see. Do you want me to take it down? Sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. That's cool. The nerds have had their chance. We can also <laughs> post, um, post this chart with, in comments of the, of the video. Um, so there's a core, is there, there's a correlation between um, the three color. That's what motivation is. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the three line, is there a correlation? Yeah, the, the term given to it is continuity, and um, there absolutely is. I mean, in like the, the trial and error and such? Yeah, more or less. I mean, they're, they're different levels. They're kind of different um, registers. So 
there, there definitely is a repetition, a fractal repetition, even at the level of tone. I mean, if you want to get to it, and it even goes down to bass, which bass theory is very advanced. There's only five basses. Well, this is actually why the sixth tone, the sixth color, the sixth line are all considered outside of it. Uh -huh. Because there actually are only really five. And the sixth is this extra transitional added on top. Um, so it does get pretty complex. But yeah, I mean... Um, I would say that what we know of the third line of being at the heart of the material process and being kind of the heart of the Maya, which is the material world um, as it exists, um, you know, this, I would say that has a direct, there definitely a correlation or, a, you know, continuity with third color and third tone. Um, and you can kind of see how some of these things can connect, you know, um, well, I so relate with the three, with the martyr, and um, and I've been trying to put that together, and I kept thinking it had something to do with the five, even though they're not resonant or harmonic, but um, I just so relate to threes, and I so have a trial and error process, and it is actually really tied in with my motivation of desire. I could see that. Like, um, someone had questioned me about, on a projector group, because I shared, oh, I use informing as a projector. And it started this whole discussion and someone was questioning me, but yeah, about why. And I was like, because I want to. <laughs> like, yeah. Because I want to. And, yeah. and I learn that way, you know, by if it's incorrect when I'm doing it, I find out really fast. And if it was correct, then I just like had a successful experiment of like, Ooh, I just found some outer edges of my authority kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's an interesting one I just thought of when, with your question about profile uh, or how it relates to line. So we're all familiar with the 12 profiles, um, you know, one, three, one, four, two, four, two, five, and so on. And they kind of have this zigzag as they, they, they move. Well, there's actually 12 color profiles as well because you know, because you have third color uh, motivation, your sun and earth are in personality, sun, earth are third color. That means that you only possibly have third color design sun, earth or fourth color design sun, earth. So your determination is either going to be thirst or it's going to be calm or nervous. Oh, uh -huh, um, I'm calm. Yeah, I'm calm as well. So we, are, we actually, both of us have the exact same one that Ra has. What he number was, is that? Huh? What, what number is that one? He is uh, color three motivation, color four determination. And that's us as well. Okay. And left variable, calm. Yeah, so, and he was a five one. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of interesting there. But um, having the three, so at color profile level, there's going to be a three, three and a three, four, then a four, four and a four, five and so on. And so, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember. So your determination, you're a six, six then because your determination is nocturnal. Yes. So Yea is, so both her motivation and her determination are the same. And again, this is the color of the personality sun earth and the design sun earth. Is the transference and, similar? Because I am like so nocturnal sometimes and it feels like, but that can be no, my projector not, not knowing when to go to bed. Well, I know, and I've been nocturnal at times in my life too. One interesting thing is that um, at the determination level, having fourth color like we have, we actually get to experience all of the different um, d determinations because the fourth color always transfers. It's made to transfer and we can actually get stuck on the different ones, but it's not bad as long as we're eating alone. Very important as long as we're not eating around other people, because for, again, continuity with the fourth line, social or antisocial. The fourth color, left fixed, is antisocial. We're antisocial eaters. So even, I mean, I will eat in the presence of other people, but only if they're like completely silent and like, don't talk to me, don't distract me. I don't want to, I mean, my nightmare is like people. So the, the funniest thing is um, I've taken PHS, my, the primary health system, a lot more seriously in the past year or so, I guess more than a year, maybe a year and a half, but, but um, I really have taken it more and more and more seriously the longer I've done it. In the beginning, I was kind of like, oh, this is a good idea. I'm just going to make sure that I'm calm and I wasn't really paying much attention to it. But what ended up happening is uh, I found what a relief it was. You know, we just had Thanksgiving, for instance. 
oh, I'm sitting around the Thanksgiving table. Everyone has food. You know, I don't even get a plate. I don't get anything. I just have a glass of water. Then wow. I go and I get my food and I just walk outside. I don't say a word to anyone. I come back. Most people don't notice. What I realized is that I always thought people were going to say, why aren't you eating? Oh, what's wrong? Do you have a problem? Nobody even notices. I just start doing it now. I was at uh, lunch with all my teammates today. Went out to lunch to do a little celebration of my teammates' work anniversary. And uh, I didn't say anything. And then the, the you know, waiter asked, oh, you know, what do you want to order? I said, oh, I'll have this and I'll, just, I'll have it to go. Nobody said a word. And I just sat there and just drank my water the whole lunch. So either they're it was- assholes or it's just the magic of you being correct. <laughs> no, I think it's the magic because I was so paranoid <laughs> that people would think I'm a freak. You know, what's wrong yeah. with you? You don't want to eat with us and they'd be offended. You know, I was... Uh, wow. But anyway, that's just a side wow. note. But, I but think that's... Like- Sorry, please go on. Yeah. Well, we, we have to end here. Um, and I think that's a great place to end. It's a beautiful thing, what you just said. Thank you. Oh, thank um, you. About, oh, what did you say exactly? It, it, was, it, was, it just felt so wrappy up to me. And then I. Just oh, no, no, it is. It is. I mean, I, I, it was uh, about, you know, determination, the importance of honoring your determination. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I would say for anyone who's interested in learning more about motivation, it definitely is a pair with your determination. That is, the color of your personality, sun, earth is very much connected to the color of your design, sun, earth. And you get your color profile, basically. Like you and I are both three fours. Uh, the four is known as the prophet. So we're actually priest prophets. Um, Yaya is a pure Buddha because she's a six, six. So she has Buddha all the way across. And that, <laughs> that color profile is like a secondary level to your profile, to your conventional line profile. Mm-hmm. And so knowing that you're a priest prophet heretic investigator is a very different kind of heretic investigator. And uh, one last little tidbit, I know we have to wrap up. Specifically for the heretics, for the fifth lines, Ra said that because the fifth line has continuity with the fifth tone, the fifth color has a lot to do with sound and with the tone of voice. You know, one of its roles is the seducer, that's usually through tone of voice. What Ra actually said is that of the six different motivations, color motivations, and of the 12 profiles, each of them with the fifth line has a unique cadence a unique tone of voice Hmm. a unique vocal mannerism and a vocal style that comes through which which people pick up on and it's just interesting to me that both your and mine are theoretically the same as Roz himself Uh uh-huh that that there is a certain way of talking and there is a certain vocal cadence that comes through uh with that that motivation yeah but yeah i would just search authority i feel that we both we all speak with Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree that, that we, we preach. I get on my sandbox. <laughs> I'm such a preacher. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for anyone who's interested in learning more, you know, please contact me on Facebook. Uh, find out your own color profile, you know, see what it is. It's a really nice extra level. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good, that's what I wanted to get across. Cool. Yeah, and it's just about being who you are and then magical things happen like you know you're just following your phs and nobody notices <laughs> and you get your way um so thank you so much jonah and um yeah i it's funny because we talked so much about what i was going to call you other than jonah and that i didn't say it in the beginning but jonah's a researcher <laughs> and um and he's he is like yeah and i are um kind of renegade uh analysts of design um we've patched together our education um and yeah have really been finding our way i feel like it's very much part of my experiment is the way that i share design um and yeah i recognize you jonah as a as a great teacher of design even though you don't have all the official documents um and yaya too um has a beautiful way of sharing so um so yeah you can contact jonah if he um, resonates with you through facebook jonah dempsey and um and yay and i too we we have we all have different flavors and it's really about who um you resonate with right it's it's more that than any credentials anyway um and especially, yeah, yeah I just want to say, because hers is like that innocence thing, you know, it's just like, it's not, 
as easily defined perhaps, but if you recall her reading that story in the beginning and imagine she could write you a story, like it's such a, such a special gift or to give to someone. Um, so yeah, before we get off, I just want to ask you, Ye, if there's anything else you want to say before we go. No, just thank you. Hmm. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, you guys. I love you. And this has been super fun. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I guess this is goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Hey. It's Sari Wild with Yaya and all her other crazy names. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is our, uh, what is it? Our, our post, post interview discussion because um, from after talking to Jonah Dempsey the other day about innocence and desire. And um, yeah, there's just so many things that came up for us and also Yaya's innocence, I'm desire. So we always have a lot to talk about on that. So um, we were just having a juicy conversation about it and thought we might as well turn on the video. <laughs> so um, do you think that you could just, Yaya, um, say what you're just saying? <laughs> it, it was about uh, innocence transferring to desire. Cause I, I'm a bit perplexed right now with the, I have a lot of innocence in my innocent peeps in my life and I'm desire. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I guess maybe I'll go back to, Oh, I, I don't know what that word. Oh, my English now that word going back referencing. Um, cause Jonah mentioned, um, about when he was saying that the transference and the ghosts and it's about like, you have regrets, right. Of everything. Mm -hmm. And that made sense to me because well, first of all, like I, I, it made sense to me because innocence basically is about trust, right? Trust in life. Because when you're transferring, it's out of fear of survival, right? Because it's so open. So, you know, it's not having a plan, not having an agenda. It's, um, it, yeah, it requires kind of like, I would say like a lot of courage and, you know, it's in the moment. So what bumps and what would bump me, bumps me sometimes in, in desire is that like fear of survival, you know, if you're gonna make it. So that kind of, yeah. And I think, cause he said um, the, the regrets, like I always, that made sense to me cause I always used to say like, I don't regret anything like, and I couldn't change anything, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, desire is about, you know, going and changing the world, you know, making it better. Let's go change the world, you know, follow me, you know, like you have that ability to lead people into that, you know, and if a person like I used to fall into that trap sometimes, like, oh, yay, let's change the world. <laughs> you know? And before well, that, a little bit's okay. <laughs> well, you know, but, you know, innocence is all about being, right? And, you know, before I was into motivation and desire, I wrote something, you know, and I was always like, you know, this changing the world thing just doesn't resonate with me. It just feels, like, <laughs> it just feels like a judgment, like it's not right, right? And I just yeah. see, beautiful as this is like, and I, and I, I even wrote, I said, you know, I don't have an interest in changing anything in the world. I just want to be in it. Mm -hmm. you know so I don't know just that answer you <laughs> <laughs> well yeah and there's lots of other things I mean what's standing out to me right now is just like how each person and whatever they carry is like such a gift to everyone else you know like what you just said resonates with me like yeah me too and I could feel that just in like humanity you know and so we get to taste it and, um, you know, through you and especially people like you who are really living into your, into your design, 
um, yeah, it teaches, it teaches us all a lot. And then it's also really like illuminating for me being desire because I mean, I'm curious what your insights might be about fear of survival for people in desire because, um, well, you know, I'm pregnant and probably single <laughs> right now. And, um, there's a lot of fear and I, I, it's funny because people offer up innocence as a, an antidote to fear. Mm. That's like really striking me right now. And I'm like, I get it and I like it, but then it's just not enough. You know, it's like yes. if someone hears about like a hard time I'm having, they're like, they just start saying all this innocent shit. <laughs> Like, oh, well, just trust and, you know, like, <laughs> the universe has got you or, oh, well, we're here for you. But what does that even, you know, like, I think my desire motivation is like, oh, great. So how are you here for me? <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> well, for you, I would imagine that would be, you know, that security and that fear of survival would be the antidote would be having a plan, right? Having yeah. desire is met in that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, is that the case? Like, so you feel secure, right? Having it planned out of like, you know what? I have this and I'm going to have yeah. you know, this to an extent, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. I, I'm actually like planning like a meeting where I'm bringing people together to talk about how they can support me <laughs> right now. But um, so yeah, I'm totally doing that. But it's interesting to me too that it's like, for innocent people, there's so much pressure for them to do the planning and stuff. And then for desire people, there's all this pressure to get into the innocent flowiness. And it's like a little bit of a taste of the other is nice, you know, but it's not a strong place. And um, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know, it, it's, it's hard to, in some ways, it's a little bit hard to pinpoint, you know, because, you know, that's just one aspect, right? It, we're all yeah. so different, you know, and it's, it depends, you know, it's just circuitry. Yeah. We have the 2551, we have defined ego, willpower, you know, so it's very like, remember what Nisa was saying about the 2551, I, uh, I want, I can, and I will. Yeah, I'm, I'm that. <laughs> but in an innocent way, it takes different. Yeah. Right? So you kind of, I don't know. It's, and it's also beautiful. You just have to kind of find, we have to kind of find like, you know, what's correct for us, you know, uniquely putting it all kind of together. You know? I call that like God's sense of humor kind of thing. And it's in every, everybody has it in their design somewhere. It's just like, like we are projectors and we have the channel of initiation. <laughs> And we're not designed to initiate, you know? <laughs> and yet. Yeah. We do. So so what else about um what else did we want to talk about out of the interview with Jonah? There was it seemed like there were so many things, but and that so that was one nugget mm -hmm. about transference. But maybe we're done too. <laughs> I think um what had come for me um, with the the motive aspect, you know, like something that, you know, I think when I was younger too, you know, I would have, I couldn't understand the having a motive, right, an agenda. And I used to see that as not caring or not loving, right? Because it's like, well, you have an agenda, you have a motive, you know? And that's what I kind of, I was narrow-minded in that sense, you know, because that's just me. And I would have other people see me, maybe the not motive as not loving and not caring, say, mm -hmm. you know, and not get it. Like, no, no, everybody has a motive, you know? So I think what I realized this summer too, it's like, oh, you know, it has nothing to do with like caring or love or, you know, you just see that can be, you know, for maybe for people with um, desire, um, motivation, maybe like having an agenda, having a plan with the other person, you know, having a motive, you know, is their love, you know, and it's just, 
as in the basic with love and caring it's just you know it's all correct well basically nothing's wrong you know it's all correct there's no right or wrong it's just who you are right and it's just i don't know i just find it fascinating i just think it's beautiful you know just everything all the circuitry mm. and it's like all amazing you know and you get to learn so much and if it's you if it's not then it's <laughs> yeah so about like having a desire yeah it can feel kind of sticky like um and I noticed that yeah I do kind of love through an agenda but it's like but I've also been learning to let of the agenda, like, so it's not like an expectation, right? And, um, and to also get, not get, but like, find out if people are on board with me. Like, I, that's really what I want to know is like, hey, I have this desire. Does this sound interesting to you? Like, do you want to play along? <laughs> Or, and then, like, what agreements could we make, perhaps, that honor both of us, mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's not, like, this big fear of disappointment or something like that. I, I feel like people feel that with me a lot, like, I'm going to be really disappointed or something. <laughs> but I really feel quite fluid. Like, I mean, desires just, like, flow out of me, like... Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, it's just like breathing. And it's not um, even like I have this in this dream of um, birthing in Hawaii. And um, it's not about whether it happens or not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like the beauty of wanting it. And maybe that somehow attracts that experience to me. Mm -hmm. And even if it, it, it doesn't look like how I thought it lo would look, um, I know it is playing a role, that desire is playing a role in however I am going to birth, whether it's in Hawaii or next to a creek or in someone's backyard. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find, I don't know, when it comes to the person, whatever it is, like, oh, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I just think it's beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think it comes across, like, I've never felt that from you or Jonah or other people with the design motivation. I don't take it in that way. I actually feel mm -hmm. that when I see that in you guys, I'm like, yeah, great. You know, it's beautiful because it's you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh well that's what we like <laughs> that's what we want to hear <laughs> but also like I don't want anything that's not really like like when people compromise themselves to like try to please me or fulfill a desire like I can smell that a mile away mm -hmm. and I don't like it and I don't want that you know yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I know what else. I loved what you said about how you picked up on that when you said that in the group you mentioned that you like to inform people. Connecting that with the motivation of desire. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't, that you had mentioned earlier that was kind of interesting to you. What, so, t what are you seeing? Um, I don't, I, I don't have the words really, it just clicked. I saw the association, I'm like, oh, yeah, that could be, you know, a connection. I think it was that I was, leadership. someone was challenging me on it, and I was like, they're like, why, but why, you know, like. There's a lot of, um, actually, there's a lot of innocence in the design community, whether it's from, although I think this person was an innocent patient. That's interesting. But um, <clears throat> I, I, I mean, among projectors, it's kind of like, there's nothing we can do about anything and why even want something, you know? 
I was talking to Nizark today. She was like, oh, yeah, a projector with a desire motivation. You know, that's really something. And I was like, I hadn't really thought of that. that that's kind of a trip. Um, yeah, definitely. This. <clears throat> but, yeah, so my thing, like, they were questioning me, why Why would you want, even want to to inform like reach out to somebody a little bit manifestory like and um use that a reason mm -hmm. and i was like i want to <laughs> like it's i mean i recognize that it's helpful for me to just like understand what's going on like if what i can kind of get away with in a way you know or like to mm -hmm. to yeah. push the edges of my experiment that's something I want to do is test the edges of my experiment and not just take people's word for things because I'll get an intuition that I'm like oh I think that's a splenic hit to yeah. reach out to somebody rather than just like waiting around for them to recognize me one day which is like I mean as projectors we could wait forever for that you know and it's not an attempt to whether they actually recognize me or not it's just to see what that was <laughs> yeah well i find this funny thing too i mean what you said just now too with the projectors and that's bouncing into something else but i mean that's with me too like most of all the invitations like it's my spleen and maybe my innocence because i feel life invites me and it's always correct mm -hmm. when i follow that it really is and it works out amazingly but and that brings in invitations but it's like i find more yeah life um, invites me, you know, and it's that intuition, that spleen, you know, as opposed to, we kind of, you know, it's not like, okay, this person has to exactly tell us, you know, <laughs> this and that, and then that, it comes in different forms, you know, the, the place can invite, uh, you know, anyway, so yeah, that, that's uh, pointing that out, you know, and yeah, that's what I mean, like, there's so many different, like, aspects it all together yeah. so. i just like to remember it's an experiment you know i mean quote unquote fuck up or you're incorrect you know it's still good information in your experiment it's not like oh god i did it wrong it's like next because <laughs> 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 it just seems like i see a lot of people just really blocking themselves with that you know like what's right how am i supposed to do this and it's just like, well, you just live it and you find out, you know, but yeah. you're not gonna, even as a projector, probably like learn very much, at least not as quickly for how hungry these people are, you know, by being a bump on a log. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, waiting in your house for something. I mean, sometimes that works. I don't get me wrong, but it just can take a while. <laughs> Mm. yeah i mean i think that's what i i kind of was like in the my really silly story that's what the point you know oh, when I, story. <laughs> I when i wrote oh, it you know, it had nothing to do with human design and it was just it just came to me i was i was well i generally most of the time like i, I find it really funny you know i find life and it's just i don't know i was i had seen this um show um a, a part of it by i don't know if you know what access consciousness is this group uh -huh. um so and you know and then i was just talking with my my uh, friend of mine and you know we were just laughing about how ridiculous people are how ridiculous we are you know how silly we are how we take stuff you know <laughs> seriously and it's so and i and i was just in that space of laughing at like myself and like everyone you know because we have it in such a we create these frameworks you know this is right this is wrong you know and it's yeah. just way in that and we're not being ourselves you know and it's just so I think that's basically what the story was you know it's like the not self of just yeah just be who you are you know what whatever it is and we're just so it's so funny you know and yeah, and I had I had a few innuendos over there, by the way, that people wouldn't get because it was things from access consciousness, like the chaos and the order is their concept, and um, mm -hmm. 
everything. Yeah, so access consciousness, they work with belief structures, kind of programs, both yeah. like energetically and verbally using words to clear. I may have told you about um, my friend and colleague, Tatiana Sakurai, who's um, actually, she's in, the, in my program as, as is Yaya. Was coming up in January, but she was giving me a session, and we we came across this uh, this energy or whatever I don't know thought belief that my family is cursed. <laughs> Did I tell you this? Um, you mentioned it, but no, okay. It was that my family was cursed, and like just ch like feeling into like generations and generations on my mom's side, and it was like everybody was passing it on like a game of telephone like a really fucked up game of telephone like we're cursed pass it on we're cursed you know? it was like this thing that we carried on generation to generation and she and I just started laughing <laughs> and it was like really clear that that was and it was we we're like oh this is really serious we're cursed you know <laughs> we're yeah, like making I know. it and it was totally clearing it. It was amazing. Um, so yeah, I love that about your story. Like I, I can even just like hear and see you when you were like even more serious. <laughs> His name yeah, was. I, even I, more so much, I mean, I did it for me. You know, I just had no. Again, I didn't have a motive or anything. It was just so much fun. I had so much fun writing that, and I just laughed. And I laugh every time I read it. You know, but it's just me. That's my sense of humor. It's good. It's really good. <laughs> And unexpected, his name is unexpected. It's just like it's so direct and yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, he farts, he jumps on the couch and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I see that um, <laughs> that kind of energy all over the place, right? And I mean, within myself too, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> this is survival. This is important. I need to understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I know it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean it's that difficult and it's not, you know, there's no pain, there's no sense, but it's sadness, you know, it's all part of life, but it's also fun as well, you know, and yeah, I, I enjoy when I. Maybe see I'm. Uh, humorous point of view and I watch people from a humorous point of view. Here's a here's a humorous point of view. Do you think anybody is watching this this long? <laughs> I keep slipping into innocence maybe that I forget that we're not just like having a conversation. Um, no, I'm sure there's some projectors out there that'll trip okay. out with us. So we uh, <clears throat> okay um did uh, just one thing though, you know, you mentioned the workshop. Did you maybe want to say mm -hmm. something about that? You haven't. Um, yeah. Are you into yeah, your desire you. or goals? What? Are you into your desire goals? <laughs> oh, I have a desire. Um, well, what it is, is I'm creating a program in the new year for, um, it's called Becoming. I just named it last night. Becoming the gift you are. And it's a new year. Um, Inner Glowing, which is the name of my business. Inner Glowing. Um, something about ascension. <laughs> anyway, it's a program that's creating itself. And it's um, by the people who are coming into it. So, um, like I mentioned before, I'm pregnant. And there's this great, like, creative momentum you know, in being pregnant, but I'm also recognizing that, like, we all go through pregnancy um, with the different things we bring forth into our bodies and our lives, and um, so the people who are going to be in it are, uh, are all birthing thing and all recognizing that for them to experience the gift that they are to the world is, um, is part of that, so it's about releasing what's not you, receiving what is you and um yeah it, there's group and private coaching and yaya is um one of i have i have a support team i'm calling y'all the dream team <laughs> oh. um one of the people in the program actually said she's like that sounds like the dream team and i was like it is <laughs> so um 
I have I have a dream team. Actually, Tatiana Sakurai, as I mentioned earlier, is one of them, and she's doing belief clearings. Um, everybody gets a session with her, and um, my coach Gary Mahler is um, who's like a super high level executive coach. By the way, he's um, he's supporting everybody while I'm giving birth, <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, is writing um, a story for each person in the group. One of her um, allegorical stories as a, what did I call you? A modern Greek mythologist. I love that, by the way. I felt so recognized. Oh, that was, for, I, for so I don't even feel like I can take credit. It just like came through me. I was like, oh, that's what she is. I'm so glad you like it. I love oh. it. So I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm it. Oh, it's like, yeah, it's just the first such just reading that one line there when you said that, I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm getting like all my temperatures going up. Um, yeah, so if if you're watching this and, and any of that piques your interest, um, it's, you know, to enroll in the program, you have to talk to me and we'll feel into it and everything. And um, it's really about the connection. So it's, it's an intimate group of people. It's not like a big thing. Um, so there's limited space and it's really, yeah, about having the, I'm, I'm calling it a constellation of people who are coming into it. That's how I like to think of it. We're all like stars, you know, and, the way our energies interact, um, it's going to be its own unique kind of chemistry. So, so yeah, you could just get in touch with me and we'd have a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for asking that. And Yaya is also, um, she's got, she'll write you a story. Anyhow, um, she's, she's a hawking stories. Not hawking, I guess that's like pawning, isn't it? But anyway, <laughs> she, you can um, pay her to do the good work of writing you a beautiful story or someone you love. What did you say, love? What is that word you, you said? Hawk? Hawk? Yeah. What is that? It's like like selling. Or... Oh, okay. I don't know that word. But I think it's used for like if you go to a pawn shop and you're like in a hawk something like you know, your grandmother's wedding ring or something, like you go hawk your, so I don't know if that's the correct usage of it, but um, maybe some, someone will correct me <laughs> or I'll look it up, but I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt I'll look it up at least. <laughs> anyway, are you, do you feel complete? Do you have anything else? No, me, yeah, I feel complete. Okay, people, we love you. Thanks for watching this whole way. And if you did watch this whole way, you should, probably should give us a call. <laughs> we should hang out, <laughs> connect, or find us on Facebook. And um, yeah, let's play. Okay, I'm going to turn the recording off here. If I can figure out how.